Lindsay Frankis with TFD Style, and uh, today I just want to show you how easy it is to give um, a little piece of furniture a quick makeover, and um, we're going to try our hand at a little bit of upholstery, so I'll try to give you guys some tips along the way and show you how easy it is um, to really change a little tiny piece up in a quick amount of time. So uh, today we're going to do this footstool. I found it at Goodwill, and it was um, $6.99. Um, as you can see, it's pretty ugly how it is now. Um, it has the top like partially ripped off, and uh, but I liked the I liked the shape of the legs, and um, they're a good wood, so I thought it looked like a good piece to go with. Um, we're going to be using this in my sister's nursery um, as a footstool to go with her rocking chair for her new little baby. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is. Take your piece and flip it upside down so that you can see how, uh, how it's all put together. And on this one, the fabric is being sandwiched in between the legs and there is a top board there that gives the support. Um, and I can see that the fabric is just going straight in here. So if you flip it over, nine times out of ten you're going to find some screws going through the bottom. Whether it's a stool or a chair, you almost always have screws attaching your base piece here to the legs. So I'm going to flip that upside down and go ahead and take these out. When you do this, you want to make sure that you save all your screws. So when you put it back together, they're all the right size. You don't have to use a drill to do this. Um, I just like it because it's fast and easy. If you don't have one, go ahead and use a screwdriver and uh, be good to go. Set those aside. So now you can see we've got our legs, our base, separated from this nasty piece here. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to remove all of the old fabric, and a lot of times you can just rip it off if you have a pair of pliers, that helps get the fabric away from the wood. mask doesn't hurt. Now that most of the fabric's gone, you can go back in with pliers, and you're going to want to remove any nails or staples that are sticking up. If you're not able to get them out, you can always take a hammer and just hammer them down in further so that they're nice and flush so that it doesn't pick or mess up your nice new fabric that you're going to put on later. All right, so I finished uh, removing all of the fabric and uh, most of the nails and staples that were in this piece, um, but we now have uh, our template for the foam that we're going to add and our fabric, but for now we're going to go ahead and set that piece aside. We need to get the base ready to work with, and so uh, right now it's got this stain on here, and it's kind of a high gloss. Um, we just want to knock that down and give ourselves a nice surface to work with um, so that the paint will adhere. Um, if you have anything that has this gloss finish on it, you're going to want to put a light sanding or 
a really good prime job. So uh, I'm going to skip the priming and go ahead and give it a little sand. And um, let me give you a couple quick tips on the sanding. Um, uh, I'm just using sanding discs. You can use whatever kind of sandpaper you want. Um, but when you're sanding and when you're working with wood, uh, there's always a wood grain. And that's basically just the direction that the lines of the wood are running in. Um, and when you sand or paint, you're going to want to um, work in the same direction as the grain of the wood. If you go against it, you're going to end up having scratches and they're going to show up in your final coat. Um, so typically the direction the wood is running will also be the direction of the wood grain when they make the furniture. You can kind of look at it to find out. Uh, but that's kind of a good rule of thumb. So if I'm going to start on this top piece here, it's running side to side. Um, and if you look on the top, you can see that the wood grain is too. So when I sand, I'm going to sand side to side. And you can start with a little bit of a coarser side, a little bit more of a coarse paper, and then go over it once you've got that done with a finer sandpaper first before you paint. Work your way around the whole piece, um, knocking off that sheen, and then going back over it with a nice fine sanding, and um, then we'll wipe it down and give it a first coat of paint. All right, so I finished the sanding. Um, I knocked all that uh, high sheen kind of gloss of the stain off, and then went back over it with a nice fine grit um, sandpaper. And then I wiped it down, cleaned it off so that it's all ready for the first coat of paint. Um, you could do this in a bunch of different ways. Um, if you're in a hurry and you just need to get it done quick, um, you could rattle can it. Just get a can of spray paint, take it outside, spray paint, and you're good to go. Um, I would like for the base coat though to, um, I like for the base coat to be the same color as what your finish is. So we're going to want this to be silver in the end. Um, so I'm going to give it a base coat of just gray first, uh, and then I'm going to go over it with the Martha Stewart um, specialty finish metallic silver. Um, this is called Thundercloud, so that's going to be our finishing coat. But to start off, um, any, any color that's similar to what you're going to finish it with is going to work. Um, I happen to have these tester containers of paint from Sherwin-Williams. Um, this just happens to be left over from when we were trying to choose paint colors for our house. This one didn't win, so I have a bunch of it left. Um, they're in these nice handy little jars with the screw off lids, so I love these for um, craft projects and painting furniture and all that good stuff. Um, it's a good paint. You don't have to buy a ton of it at a time, um, and it's easy to use. So I'm going to start by giving um, a base coat with this, and um, if you're working with something with legs like this, um, I like to start at the top and paint this part so that I can then flip it over and my legs are free and I can work all the way around them um, to finish it off. So just like sanding, if you're new to painting um, furniture, you want to paint in the same direction of the wood grain um, uh, just to give yourself a better finished look in the end so that you don't have wood grain running one way and then paint um, stripes running the other. So um, I'm going to start off by just giving this a light coat. This is kind of serving as my primer. All right, so I got that first coat on, and it's looking like um, it's not covering as well as I'd like. So I'm going to go for a second coat. Um, while I'm waiting, I wanted to share a tip with you guys. Um, once you're done painting uh, the first coat of something, and you know that you're going to use your brush again, uh, but you don't want to clean it out in the meantime, and you don't want it to get the paint dried up and crusty in there, um, a nice little trick is to take a Ziploc bag, the same size or bigger than the brush that you're using, um, slide it down in there, press the air out, and just seal the top. Um, I always like to press the bag to the brush, um, and this will keep your brush wet and from drying out in between for a long time. In fact, um, I hate to admit it, but this paint that was already in this brush was just a lighter color gray, and it was left over from, let's see, I don't know, from before Thanksgiving. We're now in January. So a good couple, month or two. Um, and it'll last like that for a long time. So saves you from having to wash your brushes constantly. 
Um, and then when you're ready, you can just come back, pull it out, and it's wet and good to go. All right, so I've got my second coat on the base of the stool, and while I'm waiting, I wanna add a little bit of cushion to the top of this footstool so it's nice and cozy. Um, what I'm gonna use is this four inch foam. Now, you can buy this at Joann's fabric stores and craft stores, but it's pretty expensive stuff. So I have a little tip for you, and um, it is to check Fred Meyer, if you've got one close to you. Um, they actually carry these four inch, um, foam sheets and I think they come in maybe two feet or yeah probably about two or three feet wide I think three feet wide by like six feet long um, and they usually sell them like in their camping or outdoor section um, just for that for like a camping pad to put under your sleeping bag and I want to say you can pick them up for around $20 or so, which is way better than trying to buy them at Joann's um, or a craft store. So check your Fred Meyer, save yourself some money, you'll be glad you did. This stuff gets spendy. Um, I have this piece left over from something else that I'm going to cut from. Um, I've got this wood base that we took off of the footstool, and I'm just going to lay it down on the corner and line it up so that I don't have to cut four cuts, I can just do two. So I've got it lined up here, lined up here. I'm going to take a Sharpie or any type of a felt tip marker and I'm going to give myself a cut line. So just trace your base piece onto the foam. Make sure it's nice and dark so you can see it. And then you can set that aside. So the next thing we're going to do is cut it. And if you haven't ever cut foam before, um, it can be kind of tricky, but this tool will make your life so much easier. Um, yes, it is a carving knife for the kitchen. Um, I have this one that I keep specifically for my craft stuff so that we don't cross-contaminate. Um, nobody wants foam in their turkey or turkey in their foam. So um, anyway, just go ahead and get your blades in there, and um, you're going to... I'm going to hold it up here so that I can see my cut line and you're just going to kind of try to keep it straight and start your knife before you touch the foam. Go a little bit past your line so that when you come through the other direction, you can see there, I went a little bit beyond the marker line. Now I'm going to come at it from this side. And bam! You've got a nice, clean cut. Um, so when you start this again, start the knife before you get to the foam so that when you hit it, you're already going, the blades are already going, and then just keep that push going the whole way down. You have to apply a little bit of pressure. Um, try not to take a few swipes at it because you can um, make little slivers kind of in this and it can get kind of jaggedy. Uh, it's not a huge deal and if that happens, it's fine because the fabric, when you pull it tight over it, um, will most likely hide it anyway, but it's nice to have a good clean cut to start with. Um, and again, sometimes you go you know, beyond the line, and that way when you come through to cut from the other side, you have a nice clean corner on there. Um, so that's that for cutting, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we have our foam, and it's cut to fit the size of our base piece, and uh, we get to start having some fun with the fabric and then actually upholstering this bad boy. So, um, I've picked up this faux fur from Joann's. Um, seems to be really in right now and I love this so we're gonna we're gonna put this on the top um, when you buy your fabric make sure that you get not only enough to cover the base but that you've got excess to cover sides come up and wrap around and have enough room to staple to the base of this so we've got a nice large piece here um, I haven't measured or anything yet but here's what we're going to do. You're basically working upside down. So building from the bottom, you're going to put your fabric face down on the table. Um, another quick little side note is this fabric is nice and thick. It's got this backing on it that's kind of heavy duty. Um, 
and then the fur also kind of covers the front side of it really well. But if you're working with a piece of fabric that's lighter weight, um, you might want to add an additional layer of fabric, just a piece of cheap muslin um, or something like that, or even just scrap fabric, um, something that's not going to show through uh, your upholstery layer. Um, but just something to kind of give it an extra little bit of um, coverage and um, kind of help smooth the corners and stuff that way too. So I'm going to take this. We've got fabric first, then we're going to go foam and our board. And I'm going to scooch it up to the edge and I'm going to kind of just eyeball to see how much I'm going to need. And it looks like this piece is probably good to go width-wise here. I'm just going to cut I'm going to make sure I cut and give myself enough room go in this direction. One thing to remember when you're doing upholstery is to always give yourself more than you actually need or that you think you need. Um, once you've tacked it all down, you can always come back and trim excess fabric off. But to come up short is really frustrating. Trust me, I've learned it the hard way a few times. So um, go ahead and get this out of the way. It's shedding in my eye. Um, and then, so now I've got this centered on my fabric. Got about the equal distance all the way around here. All pieces look like they're nicely going to come up and wrap to the base. Now, you're going to need your staple gun. This is just a Stanley staple gun here. Um, nothing fancy. Um, you can get all different types and sizes of staples to go in it. Um, I have a nice, I don't know, probably like a quarter inch piece of wood. Um, so you just want to make sure that whatever staples you're using are not longer than the base piece that you're going into because you don't want them to go through and have pokey coming out the other side. So um, use something short enough for the board. Now, when we go to put it together, you're gonna start at the center of one side. So I'm gonna take the center, doesn't have to be perfect, but somewhere close there, and you're gonna pull it, and give it a staple in the middle. Now before you work your way out, and that is what you're gonna do, is you're gonna start in the center and you're gonna work your way to the sides. But before you move on on that side, you wanna come directly across from that side, find the center here, pull it nice and taut, because it will give over time, so make sure it's nice and taut. Hold it and give it a staple in the center on this side. Now that you have both sides secure opposite each other, you can start working your way out. So I will go to the right over here, and then I'll pull and do the same thing on this side until I get to the edge. Make sure when you're using your nail, nail gun that you're um, really giving it a good press down so that the, the nails can sink in there and you don't have them standing up and poking out. So now we've got one side done. If you have a pattern, you want to make sure you line that up ahead of time. Um, this one is easy and can go anyway, so I'm good. But. So now I've got that side done, I'm going to twist it around, and we're going to do the same thing, starting at the center, pulling nice and tight, and stapling, same thing, spin it around, get the other side, nice and snug, and in the center. We're going to work our way to the corners. There are a few different ways that you can handle your corners. Um, you can go ahead and crease them and fold it over and then just pull it down. You basically just want to have a nice fold and not a whole lot of excess 
on the outside piece, but whatever you do on one side, do the same thing on the other so that it's nice and uniform. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is you are going to want this to sit flat back onto your stool base or chair if you're doing a chair. Um, so keep in mind when you start folding and stapling these corners that you don't want it to have too much added bulk from the fabric. So you may need to go in and trim out a little bit of the excess fabric just so that it lays nice and flat. Um, but again, I would staple it first and, uh, and then trim. That way you know that you've got good coverage and you don't wind up coming up short. So we finished upholstering the top piece here and uh, it's good to go. In the meantime, I also um, went ahead and put two coats of the silver finish on the legs and now it's time to reassemble the whole thing. So you're going to, um, just like with the upholstering, we're going to kind of work from the bottom up. So upside down, we're going to flip our top upside down. We're going to take our base and center it on. Once it feels like you're even all the way around, you're going to take your screws. Um, I should have said this earlier, but when you're taking your screws out, um, pay close attention to um, whether or not they're all the same or not. Mine were not. Um, so when I went to go fit this back together, I realized that um, I had two different sizes of screws. The long ones uh, are going to go in these long side pieces. And then as you can see, this one's a little bit shorter, and so the shorter ones go over there. So make sure you pay attention where things are coming out and put them back in the same spots. It'll make your life a lot easier. Um, go ahead and screw this back on. side and work my way straight across so that things don't shift and cattywampus. You do need to be aware that when the screw goes through that and it's spinning, it might tweak your fabric a little bit. Um, so I suggest kind of going slow, especially through that first um, bit as you're getting through the fabric. Once you're through it, you're probably pretty good, but keep an eye on it because it can really take the fabric and tweak it. Um, you might need to back your screw out and go in again once you've got the hole made. 